one of the most probably one of the most important topics in all of information technology and broader uh, practically every because information technology and software touch every field it has become uh, something that's of concern to all of us anyone with a smartphone anyone who uses e-commerce anyone who can send messages online any of that any I don't know unless we live in a forest and don't use any technology we now have a stake in this topic and to first i'll actually put up a small uh, presentation here and uh, share my screen just so that this topic uh, adjunct surveillance is something that uh, uh, our chief of engineers raju this now talks about a lot and uh, this is the sort of ambient surveillance that is now going on essentially all the time even when we are we don't think we are being surveyed and this is by mind you this is by private companies so let's take some uh, examples and you know the google or facebook or twitter or any of these platforms now and a lot more actually even b2b companies there is no surveillance going on and there is data being recorded that's one step but there is a lot more I mean, your phone knows who you are calling the software in the phone is obviously mediating the calls all of that that's one level that's inevitable by product of using the technology itself but and, all, and as a result some server somewhere was recording these that's also on another level and that's for legitimate reasons they call the control or you know making sure the call is routed properly all of those things but something much more sinister is going on where that data whether it's call data or our usage data or click stream data or all of it is actually there is a market for the data and that's being traded around that is what uh, we need here so and uh, take an example and so first at the free service level we are paying for our free uh, usage with our data that's one thing and uh, but what is going on is these companies are gathering information about data from other websites other tools other apps on our phone but the data is actually being funneled into for example even when we don't think facebook or google would have access to some data they often do so that's what we call the adjacent properties of third parties that data is also being funneled into this and i'll give some examples here so and uh, here is a headline from wall street journal uh, that healthcare systems data so this initiative called project netting so patients medical data and uh, the health data is actually how google has access to they make deals and uh, here is another example google and mastercard get a super deal to track the users and uh, so this is uh, google found the perfect way to link online ads to store purchases credit card data so here what is going on is you have the uh, online our click data and then the credit card data those two are being collated together and when you bring that kind of data together they gain a lot more insight about consumer behavior but in the process our privacy is gone and uh, these are not and this is similarly this is a leak document this is actually last year 2020 and every search every click every buy on every site that's what they are selling and the clients of some of the major corporations like right? google microsoft pepsi they bought this data this is the secretive market for your browsing data so this is what is going on today this is reality and we are surrounded by it. You know, our phones and you know our uh, desktops you know when we use the web any of this you know many of our apps have this type of uh, trackers embedded often they would be in our course maybe there is some uh, kind of a, even something like a free emoji or free sticker or something 
that actually is collecting data that whatever that some add on it is and that's the problem today and these deals are done without anybody's permission without user permission and without any kind of regulatory oversight in most cases in fact all this is what prompted the gdpr the gdpr applies only to the eu so companies like us we have adopted it globally uh, that but and these companies fight with every step and if you go look at for example you will see that google is being filed in france and uh, facebook is filed here all the time you will see this practically every month they're getting fined somewhere so the whole idea is you know we'll come close to the edge and if we get caught we'll pay a fine that's that's the business model right now and that is and so as a user we have no control over any of these and in in india i mean this is even one layer removed because they'll often the data is not even residing over there in most cases though legislatively some of that could be changing but as of right now most of the data is not even in india so we have no even our government has no visibility into what is being done with the data and this is not just in free consumer level apps it actually goes on even more so in the b2b uh, business kind of application which is something that we are uh, familiar with and we have seen and here is some examples you go to for example um, uh, if you go to a web app or even a mobile app when mobile app they put a tracking inside the app uh, they are subtly tracking this and, and and the third parties with third parties and this is the third party tracker situation i'll uh, talk about this so for example you go to salesforce website you will see all the google analytics double click floodlight twitter analytics facebook pixel all of it is there that means that any user of facebook is you now essentially all this data is going there and that salesforce data is then correlated with what facebook already has what google already has so you have actually this type of uh, 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 360 degree surveillance and that's what they want they want behavioral data from within the apps and from the web behavior and the mobile apps all of it so they can correlate it together so they build a profile for example i have this kind of phone and i can access it from this geographic area and then correlate with my i charge my credit card here and i use these apps and i use these features in these apps you know all of this data so you can imagine how much data they have on each of us with all this collected and the goal is to then they go and tell advertisers we have very uh, extremely uh, precise demographic profile so you can target your ads that's the goal and so the ad prices are can be much higher that's the entire uh, business model here uh in some segments i mean even we are aware of click prices per click it could be 70 80 100 per click and in some other more even even more lucrative segments the the per click prices could be 300 500 for one click um that actually is coming from all this you know, the that they are they are they give you this size tracking but the price we all pay is that there is no such thing as privacy and google the uh, former ceo eric schmidt even said it there is no such thing as privacy that used to that's what he said actually and so it has been the norm for a while and this is now last like gdpr have fought this and this is where the the privacy or democratization theme plays out where how do we fight this as you know as governments and citizens all of it that's the you know. and there are more examples they say we similar these are these are business software companies but look at how many for the linkedin facebook pixel double click google conversion tracking all of it is there and simply go to sap site bing all of the trackers are embedded there so the website is like festooned with all these uh, ornaments these trackers and what they similar these companies are actually not in the ad business they actually sell software they sell subscription still look at the amount of uh, 
contractors there and next week the same thing. I can go on and on and on. And in fact, we actually looked at all this, we took a stance, we are not going to, be, going to put zero trackers. So you will not find Google Analytics, not find uh, Bing, any of it in our site. And that is a conscious choice. We, and we had to work very hard to remove all of them because they certainly have many ways of getting back in. We use some tool, some JavaScript library and they will have some track of that. So that is why we have to actually do a very thorough, exhaustive thing. And we took a few months to get rid of every last track. And we've done this, but this is what we really believe must be done. And, and Slack, similar, and every, so practically any company can keep, up, can keep going in this. And uh, so these are companies that are already charged for their software. On top of that, they also are selling this type of uh, surveillance data. That is what is most upsetting about this because you pay for software and then you also get tracked and then the data reaches the, the surveillance companies. But, and this is the reality today. And the question is, what do we do about this? Right? That's actually the fundamental thing. And legislatively, many countries are now passing laws and that is now becoming more, it's spreading. For example, recently South Africa passed a law that is fairly strict and, and I already mentioned GDPR, that is the European Union law. Um, and also more and more countries are now requiring that their citizens data be kept in their own jurisdictions so that uh, they can uh, they can actually import you know they are subject to their, their own local laws on data protection all that eu is very very strong on this and uh, now european union data has to be kept within eu and other countries are starting to come around to the same thing and India also, I think there is uh, more and more uh, requirements coming up and both from in terms of administrative regulations as well as new legislation being passed. So this is a global trend. And in this, now the surveillance companies will all say, we need all this data in order to personalize the service somehow. But in reality, I mean, as you know, any of us know from our experience, Often the ads they show are quite dumb, right? If I bought a pair of shoes for the next uh, few days, I'll be getting the same pair of shoes everywhere. I already bought it. So why are we showing me the same ad again and again, right? And this is common, you've seen it, they follow me around. As if you search for a pair of shoes, you'll find that every website is now showing these ads. This is very common, right? And so it's not like, and, and the reason is, Ultimately, no amount of AI you can throw can really understand humans all that well in these things in this context. It's a lot more very contextual, uh, specific. In other words, general algorithms cannot track, cannot be very specific to each one of our uh, situation. You think you built a profile, but the profile assumes some statistical <coughs> models, but you know, somewhere or the other it breaks down for so many people. So, and that's one, uh, uh, one justification they have, but they sell this to advertisers on the other, other side to say that we give you this precise data and that is why you, you need to pay higher for our ads. And increasingly what we have found as advertisers that that's actually not even true. Increasingly the ads are not all that productive, particularly the, the higher you pay, the less uh, ROI uh, you get. And, and often a lot of companies are now spending and there's a flood of venture capital and so that's going into these ads, but really most people are not asking, are these ads really worth it? By asking the question, are these ads worth it? Then we are also indirectly asking the question, is all this tracking worth it? And on the other side, extremely simplistic strategy, for example, a newspaper ad or a, a flyer attached to a newspaper, these things can be quite effective. And these violate no privacy at all. This is another thing that we have actually seemed to have forgotten in all this digital rush. Quite old fashioned techniques in marketing actually work. That, uh, for example, I often like, how do we build uh, customers for, uh, for a regular everyday product? 
Now well, you go to the bus stand here or a, a, a railway station here and hand out flares just to all comers, right? That can build up local awareness. This is, you know, these are techniques that are well known and it's not new. And, and yet in this digital rush, we've forgotten all this. And companies are paying massively for digital ads for the privilege of being digital. But in reality, you know, digital is no longer actually often a so all this privacy violation, in my opinion, is not even worth uh, any of the personalization they are supposed to get out of this, or, or ads that you want to see kind of thing. And mostly it's not worth it. And, and we also see, I mean, this is uh, all the time this happens on YouTube. Like, let's say I go and uh, uh, put a meditation video, and they will have some ad, like ad for, a, a, you know, a, Zomato chicken or something like that. And, you know, it's completely inappropriate in that context. And yet these ad companies are doing this. I mean, uh, you know, the user is watching a meditation video. Maybe they're not in the mood to order food, right? But that's that's what they're doing still. So this is the example where I'm saying, even with all this data, they're not actually doing a good job of anything showing these ads. And uh, then what is the point? Why are we then being surveilled so much? And then these, on top of it, there is, this is where the democratization argument comes in. Recently, we all know Twitter, for example, the running with uh, the Indian government, where Twitter banned some politicians' Twitter accounts, which they have already been doing in the US. The most famous, of course, is uh, 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 Trump's account that they banned. But here's the point, whether you agree or disagree with uh, whichever political side you're doing, should Twitter have the power to do this? In what legal mechanism did they use to arrogate to themselves this power? And then on what basis, if they, they have the power, then why shouldn't they be regulated as if they have the power? Right? Because all power, in political power, in any democratic setup is subject to judicial review, subject to you know, parliament or uh, uh, legislative approval, all of them. So you have a political process. Twitter cannot argue that they are beyond the political process and also claim that they have the power. That's the problem. And so they increasingly running into that type of uh, exchange governments. It's not just in India. This happening in France, this happened in Australia, which is Facebook, and uh, Google has had its run ins. These companies argue both that they are private platforms, they have the right to do whatever they want and they can ban anyone. And at the same time, they have the protection of free speech for themselves, which is something that they won't extend to anybody else. So this is, the, the, this is where the landscape is today. And where is it heading? In my opinion, where this is heading is next few years, you're going to see increasing geographic specific law. So you pretty much every, jurisdiction every country they are going to have data centers being demanded, data being kept locally. And that's something that's coming and, and, and every company has to scramble to meet these. And we are doing that in Zoho as well. We are building data centers everywhere. That is our response to that. And this makes it then very clear. We also tell uh, citizens of every jurisdiction, your data is subject to the laws of your jurisdiction. We as a company will not take this data out of your uh, country so that it completely stays there and it's subject to laws of your jurisdiction. And what those laws are, you determine in your process, in the process. We don't have any uh, say in that matter as a company. And so this is the right stance, we believe. And we ourselves, by disallowing any of these third party contracts, we have taken a strong stance to protect the privacy of users. Now, the there is one argument, and the Google former CEO Eric Schmidt advocated, which is that there's no such thing as privacy, get used to it. But very hypocritically, he actually challenged people who brought up his own personal life and, and he made it made sure that Google search expunged those. We had the right to do it, but then why not extend that right to everybody else? That's exactly what is there with GDPR, where the right to be forgotten. For example, if I have, uh, you know, some, some, something that I did 15 years ago, the law now extends me the right to demand from search engines and others that delete this data. It's long time ago, it's over. 
you know, they ran. This is what he did with uh, Google. The Google's former CEO did this exactly. He made sure that certain data that was personally embarrassing to him did not appear in Google search. But he just would not extend the courtesy to average Google users, like you and I. That is the problem. So, and so this governments will have to force them to do it. And I believe that compulsion is coming. I don't believe that we are going to have a the wild west world we have. And that came about because most people, you know, particularly governments and citizens did not understand this technology. Now that this technology, you know, smartphones and search and maps and everything is in all of our heads, we are all very used to it. Now this, this next issue of this privacy protection and who is, who wants the data? Our stance is that the user unconditionally wants their own data. That's the first step, personal data. They have the right to demand the service to remove that data if they don't want it. That's the first step. The second is there are then even public sort of news items or something, which is subject to different laws, but there was a publicly available say, news story. A user may have a certain, what they call the, the period where uh, after a period, they have the right to be free. Uh, so it could be in some archive somewhere, but you have to go look up that archive. It's not regularly available in search which is how the real world used to work, right? The right to be forgotten. And for example, you know, in, in many jurisdictions, a criminal record or a, or a felony or something after conviction, the period is served, they have a right to be forgotten. If they're a law abiding citizen after that, they have the right to be, the whole thing is kept somewhere in a dusty file somewhere, but it's not coming up in the first item in search all the time. These kinds of laws are there on the books in many places now. And I believe they will spread further and further. Any country with a really democratic value system with a, with a, uh, uh, a, a, a regular constitutional law and order, uh, the process, due process rights, all of this will end up adopting these types of laws because these are essential for citizens to go about life. And then there is surveillance data from all the you know real world, like you go to the store, there is all the cameras and that video feed could be going off somewhere outside the country too, that is another thing now. And, and so not even subject to jurisdiction of where the, the store is located. All of these practices are coming under challenge. And in the next several years, you're going to see these uh, uh, change. And, and companies, and we are, we are making a big move in Zoho in this. We are bringing privacy as a core, core value of Zoho. We even have this tagline, choose privacy to Zoho. And we believe that this is going to become legislatively important for everyone. And the surveillance companies are going to be the most challenged in this. And then the companies that so routinely censor the views expressed on their platforms, then will be accountable by the legislature for everything posted there. I mean, they'll be held accountable because you are you start stop started censoring stuff, then you are taking responsibility for it. You're not leaving it to the courts. You are taking responsibility for it, then you take full responsibility. I think that is what the, uh, uh, the situation is going to be. And this is where I believe uh, we, we are as a, uh, in, in terms of the internet, in terms of uh, smartphones, all of that, this is where it's heading. And you recently you saw Apple has made uh, uh, a major announcement. They are going to actually have uh, uh, certain uh, types of photographic videos. They're going to search in the phone itself and alert law enforcement because these are highly damaging material and they are going to do this. And this is another form of, we, are, we have to accept that these are now, they're subject to loss even as we use phones. And if we are subject to loss, then the companies are also subject to loss, the same loss. And the companies are accountable for what they do with our data. If we are accountable for our behavior, then the companies are accountable for their behavior as well. So you're going to see a lot more of these going. And so that's the that setting and I, I want to provide, a, and this is the analog of open source. Open source now is completely mainstream. Every company, every, every business now uses it. And in a similar way, these ideas, this our own privacy and, and, and data protection policies, security consciousness, these will become ubiquitous. That is what we do. And with this, I will be open to take uh, some questions. And so thank you for uh, listening to that. Thank you.